Good morning. Welcome to Decker's Cool Weather Veggie Planting. April showers always bring May flowers and it's also the perfect time to get started in the garden. Today we're actually going to start with the next best thing is you don't have to start digging quite yet but we also can do a lot of container gardening with cool weather veggies and herbs. So I've got together quite an assortment of great ways to do this and these are all except for basil, available for going outside. So, you know, the cool weather veggies, we've got a great assortment, both of seedlings, all organic, as well as um, additional seeds that you may want to buy a packet of, just so you'll have the backup when the first crop goes, you plant another row. Sequential seeding is actually one of the wonderful ways to extend your season. And most gardens will be able to get three crops. We'll have the cool weather veggies. We'll have then our, all our favorite summer favorites when the soil warms up. And then again, at the end of August, you can plant seeds or seedlings for the cool weather crops again in the fall. So it's a, a really long season and definitely now is the time to get started. So the first plan will be to walk around your yard um, and determine where you get the most sun. Six hours of sun is really the the best growing conditions for healthy plants and also a bountiful crop. Again if you don't have six hours of, of sun in your garden bed the next best thing is to use some containers because you can move the containers to follow the sun. So whether it be on your patio, your deck, your front steps, or your driveway, maximize wherever you have that sun. So we've got wonderful containers. Um, interesting if you have two by four that might have a birdhouse or uh, something on top. We have some new, thick, new uh, containers that can go right in around and be mounted on a two by four. So you can have, you can stack them or you can do it as a square around a two by four um, if you have that as part of your fencing. But anyway, that's a wonderful way to maximize with a vertical height of container gardening. Of course, um, the window boxes are great and we've got some veggies um, set up. Again, you can plant these right in the ground, but if you don't have the ground prepared and you're not planning on digging yet, uh, this is a great way to get started because these veggies you can start um, eating very soon. You pick the biggest leaves first and make, make sure you're eating a rainbow every day so you get to get your variety of colors and different greens. The one herb that you want to always keep in its own special container will be the mint. And mint is wonderful and it's a perennial so it will come back each year but you do not want to mix your mint with your other vegetables. It has a more aggressive growth pattern and it will squeeze out the other plants. So you want to be able to enjoy everything. You also can go the easy way, which is a pre-assorted um, herb um, window box. So, you know, there's lots of great options for you. When I was talking about um, your stair steps, you could use, um, we have these great new lightweight pots that are also self-watering, but basically you could do um, vegetables in that. With containers, you're always going to use the Espoma um, organic potting mix, and you would use bush beans for something like this. So again, go for your colors, get your wax beans, your purples, and your string beans. And if you're doing it in pots like this, you would want to uh, make sure you're doing bush varieties. So, strawberry pots, everybody's familiar with strawberry pots, but you don't have to just plant strawberries in them. Um, and we also have some smaller versions of strawberry pots. This is a great one because it's actually easier to water the strawberries. And you can also protect the strawberries by putting them up on a table or putting a little netting over them. So you get the, the strawberry rather than the birds. So these are all wonderful ways to get started without a lot of um, outdoor work, which we're going to do a little bit later. You also could do um, a big pot such as this 
and I know um, everybody is really enjoying their vines and we have a lot of vines um, this is actually a great fixture which I'm not going to unwind but this is actually you can make your own trellis and you would pull you would untwist these and you get to make this stretch out so all of a sudden you've got a spot for the vines to grow up and one of the best things to put in that would be the Scarlet Emperor Runner Bean Vine. This is a terrific hummingbird attractor. And while we'll have a seminar later for hummingbirds, we have a lot of the seeds in now that you want to pick up because this is the number one, along with black and blue salvia, which will come later, that you need to have to get your hummingbirds to remember your, your spot. Once they find you, they will be back. We also, all right, one jumped off the table, but we also have the larger packets of hummingbird and butterfly mix. So again, we are all about pollinators. We want to get as many as possible to our gardens. And with pollinators, we do need to make sure we're giving them flowers that bloom throughout the season. While most of these are annuals, um, they are imperative that you have that, so you get your all your vegetable plants um, pollinated by all of these visiting bees and and butterflies so we've got a great assortment and one that the kids of all ages always love is putting in some sunflowers and these will get later in um, as potted plants always good to get a packet of sunflower seeds put these in um, in in the ground these are not grown in pots because they do get tall but you want to make sure you're putting that somewhere where it's not going to interfere with other plants. Um, when you are planting your beds outside, you always want to make sure you know which angle the sun is coming at. And you always want the tallest plants to be on the east side of your garden bed. So your tomatoes in the cages, your pole beans with the trellis to climb, um, the sunflowers, um, all of, and corn, all of those want to be that east side. So they would get the morning sun, but then they actually are not blocking the sun for the lower growing plants for the rest of the day. And that's how you'll be able to maximize a lot of your sun by just thinking about where you're planting them. Um, another couple, so I'll go this way. Um, If you do not have a fence or a trellis, this is a great fixture where you can kind of make it be your trellis and you can actually grow wonderful um, seeds like nasturtiums, which we will have later in the season, um, not later in the season, later in the spring, but these are actually edible flowers and edible leaves. So it's a wonderful annual to grow. And these are definitely in a very hard casing, the, the seeds. So the best way to get these started is to soak them overnight before planting them in, in the uh, potting mix. So with all of the pots, again, more potting mix. Again, additional hummingbirds. Um, this is called the, the Spanish flag, and this is the vine. So you want to have somewhere where the vine will grow up and over and bloom and you'll be able to see the hummingbirds go to uh, come to feed. And then another wonderful hummingbird is the cardinal vine and this cardinal flower vine. So these three vines are essential for creating a hummingbird paradise, which is what I love to have in my garden. So hopefully those hummingbird lovers are listening in. This is a great time to get started with that. And the nice part is you could plant um, in, these are terracotta pots. You can have plantings at the base, so it could crawl up there, have it at the top, so you can have a great variety of plants. With terracotta pots, one um, really good tip is that they do tend to, um, to dry out a little faster, but if you line the pot with um, paper, with newspaper it's a great way it keeps the moisture inside still will drain out if there's way too much but um, you can also put it to cover the hole or you can use a coffee filter to cover the hole at the base but the um, 
newspaper will actually, over the course of the season with watering, you will actually, it will decay and it'll just be more benefit nutrients for the roots in the soil. So we talked about some of the mixes. Um, when you are working in your uh, raised bed or your garden bed that's existing, you will always want to add at least um, a container of one cubic foot of compost. We have all organic compost, but each year you want to add that as you turn over. Just shovel it, you know, turn over. It's not that you need to rototill everything. Um, but basically that will give more nutrients for this year's crop. The, the compost you put in last year um, was definitely used up throughout the season. So one uh, wonderful starter, this again, all our, our Spoma products are organic, but this is a great root stimulant for plants. So again, the roots are the most important part of, of our plant. Everybody thinks everything's just above ground, but it's the soil and the roots that are the essential for getting healthy plants that give us the nutrition. Um, again, a nice, wonderful, all-purpose organic is plantain. It can be used for flowers, vegetables, shrubs, anything. Um, and it just, you know, so you can apply it anywhere. This can actually be, um, it'll tell you the amount to use on the back, but basically you're adding it to the hole as you're planting the seedlings. So it just gives it a good start. Now one thing that we haven't had in the past, and these are, um, this is a perennial and it's asparagus. Now asparagus does take, you do not get a crop the first year, and the second year you want to let it just grow and, and turn into a feathery fern rather than eating that asparagus. But then the following year, you'll be ready early spring. You'll start seeing those wonderful spears pop out of the ground. And of course, mine never made it to the kitchen to, to cook them. I would always just break it off and eat it out there in the garden. But these are already, the roots are starting. And so this is a wonderful perennial. So you wanna find a space that has enough room and um, it's actually a great um, plant to have. And the feathery ferns are like adding asparagus fern, which is what you buy in the annuals to decorate some of your containers. So it's a, it's a great uh, addition to the perennial garden for veggies. And then we've got a couple other great um, novelties which are onions and potatoes and these are the purple potatoes or actually they're called adirondack blue uh, again th the more colorful the uh, food is the more nutrients that are in there so you know that's a good way to to add to that so one other thing um, when you're where's my weed? So when we're starting with our um, raised bed, I know a lot of people I've talked to so far this season are talking about building raised beds or buying them. We do have several options, but the most important part is to, if you're putting it on top of um, soil that's you know in your yard, you lay this down in the frame and you actually will get, um, you know, a nice smooth layer there. And then you will add the garden soil. Uh, we have organic garden soil. The nice part about that is you're building a new bed. It already has the compost in it. So next year you'd add compost, but you don't need to add it this year. So this is a great product. It will keep the weeds um, somewhat restrained. <laughs> it's not gonna be perfect, but by using um, the garden soil and never topsoil, you won't be adding any weed uh, or grass seeds that sometimes is mixed in with uh, topsoil. Uh, so anyway, that's a great um, product. And then the other thing <clears throat> that is important is kind of identifying <laughs> what you're planting. So you know, I mean, once it's all growing and once you are familiar, it's a great way and I really don't care whether I'm picking mustard greens or watercress or parsley. I mean, I'm going to put it all in my salad. So, you know, but for those who are just starting out, it's really good to 
identify so you can kind of play with your flavors. So there are many varieties of these uh, garden labels. And uh, then again for a little bit later, we did just get in our first batch of praying mantis and these are the egg um, capsules. Uh, so this is actually terrific. They are wonderful at um, going after some of the insects that we don't want in the garden. And then ladybugs, for those who deal with aphids outdoors, this is a wonderful um, way to naturally rebalance um, your garden and minimize the bugs. Now remember, not all bugs are bad. You do not want to use a whole lot of sprays to wipe out everything. You want to only go after the specific um, problem and only the specific uh, plants that are dealing with it. But ladybugs are wonderful and they are um, a very special addition. Everybody has always loved ladybugs. But this is, you keep these in the refrigerator to keep them cool and they are basically not hibernating but they are not actively um, you know moving around and then you would actually once you see a plant that's having some issues um, you would bring these out at dusk and you would want to moisten the plants so you don't want them to be dry you don't want to do it in the sun because they will fly away they actually can't fly at night so that's the best um, timing and some people say well they don't stick around long well if they don't stick around that means you didn't actually have an aphid problem in the first place because they have to once you release them they are looking for um, nutrients themselves so basically this is great and i definitely use several containers of this throughout my season and it's wonderful um, you would put them at the base of the plant and let at, at dusk. So you go out there with a flashlight and you kind of sprinkle them around um, and they will climb up through the plant eating the bugs as they go. So, it, um, so that's actually a fun way to do it. One of my favorite websites uh, that I do get a daily email from is the Farmer's Almanac. And while everybody's familiar with that, boy, do they have a lot of really interesting information and just in little small capsules, so it's a good way to get started. But this morning, it came in and it was an, a tribute to the Native Americans and it was exactly part of my uh, seminar today. And it's called The Three Sisters. And basically, this is companion planting and it is how um, the Indians, our Native Americans, introduced to the settlers how they grew. And it was not, they didn't grow gardens that were perfectly aligned in perfect rows. They were much more natural. And so basically, they didn't have a lot of extra things, but they would plant corn in the center. And you could do this in a whiskey barrel. Um, corn would go in the center and that becomes the stake. Um, and you don't need a stake or a trellis, and you would plant pole beans, not bush beans, but pole beans around. And these come in a variety of uh, versions, even the Romano beans, which are the hummingbird one. But they will use the corn as the trellis to climb up. And the third would be um, either summer squash or zucchini, and that would be planted around the um, exterior. Basically, you get the height with the corn, you get the vegetables with the beans, you get the crop with the zucchini, but the zucchini is also shading the roots and keeping the soil um, moist, which is a wonderful benefit. So this becomes almost a self-contained garden. And so this is actually a wonderful way, and what this was was there tribute and thank you to Mother Nature, who's providing all this. Corn, beans, and squash complement each other nutritionally. Corn provides the carbohydrates. The dried beans are rich in protein, balancing the lack of necessary amino acids found in corn. And finally, the squash yields both vitamins from the fruit and healthful, delicious oil from the seeds, as well as many of the flowers you can eat. 
you know, you can do a quick fry or stir fry with those. So these are actually really fun. Kids would love it. It's a great way to get them started and, and also a little bit of history too. So another very interesting um, part is actually companion planting. And this, I, we will upload the chart, but basically this is uh, giving you recommendations of which plants are gonna grow best together. So for instance, with the asparagus, um, it loves being with basil, tomato, nasturtiums, and parsley, but it doesn't play well with onion, garlic, or potatoes. So when you're doing your planting, you wanna make sure, you check out the chart, and make sure you're not planting um, plant only the plants that are compatible next adjacent to each other. So there are ways of doing it where you would put broccoli in the middle and spinach on either side. So the longer growing season um, is the broccoli and the spinach will be the early crop that you'll start eating right away. And so when by the time the spinach is done, the crop the broccoli will be able to grow bigger. So it's one way of making your um, beds maximize your crop and again not having a lot of extra space in between and there are many plants that you can grow this way by doing um, kind of adjacent planting so you don't have to have rows with big uh, layers of mulch unless you're really walking down the bed and you're planting big rows so you have a lot of crop to get um, I try to plant mine very close together and I lean in to, to gather my crop, but it also minimizes the amount of weeding you have to do. So that's kind of a nice benefit because everyone's loving their garden until they see how many weeds have taken over. Now, if you do have a big bed, then you could put down some mulch in those um, aisles. So that's actually a wonderful way. So. These are, um, let me see whether I've got some other little tidbits for you. Uh, but basically, you know, you want to always harvest your, your crop in the early morning because that's when they're, you're going to have the best flavors. You don't want to wait till mid afternoon and start picking the crop. The only um, one crop that you do want to make sure that the leaves and the vegetable is dry before you start um, picking would be beans because they do not like to have their their um, vine or their bush uh, plant disturbed when it's moist so that would be the only one perfectly acceptable to pick in the afternoon um, so yeah, I'm going to give on the chart it will have all of the best timings um, again for summer vegetables you'll see that we do not have tomatoes in yet. It is way too cold out for tomatoes. The soil needs to get to be at least 65, and that's where the soil warmth is that way in the early morning and late in the afternoon, not just between 12 and three when the sun's on it. So you wanna make sure you're, you're putting your plants in the right um, growing conditions so that's why the cool weather veggies are a great way to start. And we will bring in the summer vegetables as it warms up. But first, uh, you know, there are certain things you really want to wait um, and plant at the right time because they're not going to grow. If you plant them, they're just going to stay stunted until the soil and the uh, air temperatures and the, more importantly, the evening temperatures reach their they're a preferred, um, and are preferred too, a little warmer than this. <laughs> but anyway, um, so there will be charts on that. And remember when we did the seed starting for tomatoes, we had Cornell Cooperative's um, timing for best planting times for Long Island when we're in zone 7B. So you want to make sure you're putting your plants, and these are all vegetables and herbs, in, in the right time period. So really it's going to be the um, mid-May is our, uh, May 15th is all clear for the last frost date. And basically tomatoes, again, their best planting time will be more like Memorial Day um, because that's when the ground. But one thing, if you are very anxious and you want to get started, 
Um, one way to do it is to plant your tomatoes in big um, pots. So for instance, we have many varieties, terracotta and plastic, uh, uh, that you could use to plant your tomatoes and you plant a tomato cage right with it um, so that it grows into that framework. But basically that gives you a little head start because the soil in pots, particularly the plastic pots, will warm up sooner than the soil in the ground because that just, you know, holds on to its coolness for quite a lengthy period. But that way you can get a, a kickstart on your tomatoes. But still not before mid-May. That's really, you know, the timing. Um, but, you know, I, I'm a big user of both um, containers as well as a garden bed. My garden bed is not that large, so I use the plants that prefer a little more shade. So things like parsley and spinach and all the green uh, cool weather veggies, uh, the lettuces, and they go in my garden bed. And then my summer um, vegetables uh, go into containers. So whether it be tomatoes or peppers or cucumbers. And cucumbers is another way to use a tomato cage. You don't have to have the cucumbers trailing all over a, a huge garden bed make them climb or build a little lean to where you can do it with two angles of you know even a screening and let the vines climb up that and then you can plant um, some root vegetables in between um, underneath the tent so you could plant things like carrots or beets or um, turnips whatever you want that again it's maximizing the below ground space with the above ground um, so you can get a lot more crop in much smaller space. So with that, I'm going to uh, take a break and we will bring you outside tomorrow because it's again April showers happening right now. But we've got a great um, assortment of organic seedlings with herbs, vegetables, and strawberries and blueberries out there. So. Start thinking, you can figure out your sun, not today, but where you've got the space, and really kind of map out a plan of what you want to grow. And of course, always pick your favorites, but one way to encourage the variety in your food is just always add something new each year so that you, you know, try something out. And you kind of want to keep a log so you know what, what worked well, and if something didn't work, then don't try to grow that next year. You know, there's plenty of great vegetables. So don't feel you have to just go with three because those are the only three. Try some more. It's a really great way. So with that, I'm going to uh, continue tomorrow when the rain stops. But thank you for joining me. And we're happy to see you at Decker's when you come in. Welcome back to Decker's and the sun is shining today. So, of course the breeze is still here, but this is still welcome to cool weather veggies. Again, don't get too excited. We've got to start with the cool weather because our weather, these nights are still very brisk. But all of the plants we have in right now are ones you can plant right in the garden. And very soon you'll be able to start um, picking the bigger leaves of lettuce and starting to make salad. So many things get um, grow rather rapidly, even in these cool temperatures. You can also put in a row of um, radishes. Those take 30 days um, from the time you sow the seeds to the time you uh, eat your salad with the crunch of radishes. So lots of things that you can immediately start eating on or very soon. And remember, it's still only mid-May, mid-April, sorry. We're all hoping for mid-May. But um, that will be when we'll really have more, beginning of May to mid-May is when we'll have more of the summer vegetables. So to go over what um, the great array of herbs and, and veggies that can go right in now, of course we have um, mints, we have lavender, we have rosemary, oreganos, many varieties, um, sages, uh, Going down the road, arugula, um, artichokes. Artichokes are another wonderful plant you can put in. It almost can be a thriller in the middle of a 
container because it actually takes a long time to, to grow, but the flower does become an artichoke and it's a very pretty plant. So with that in mind, um, again, we will keep getting in cool weather veggies and we will be able to uh, replenish what, what is already sold out now. But I'm so glad that everyone is excited about getting their gardens in. And I want to just remind people that if you are doing a raised bed, it's a wonderful thing. You want to to make sure whether you're doing a wooden one or even up here, this you wouldn't need to do the weed protector. But if you're doing it based on the ground up, um, you would want to put your weed protector down. And of course, it's always good to get your tomato cages um, prior to the planting because that way you've got as many as you need. Um, they also can be used for climbing uh, things like cucumbers. So you don't have to let cucumbers sprawl all over your garden. Make them climb. Make it more compact. Um, strawberries, again, lots. We talked about that yesterday, but they're also going to bear fruit very uh, soon. And so, you know, it's really about get, get started and really um, a terrific assortment and with lots more coming. We do have a little basil in, but that is only for your kitchen windowsill. It is still way too cool to put the uh, basil out. Again, make sure you download the list of companion plantings um, because that's a great way to maximize your space in your garden. And also um, make sure you're not planting incompatible plants next to each other because they will be much more bountiful. Some companion plants are also good at deterring the insects that often uh, attack a few of the plants that we love. So with that in mind, um, there are definitely at least three seasons of crop. And if you put your peas in, you're going to soon have bounty from the peas. And then after that, you can put more pole beans in. There are many plants that benefit from having sequential sowing. So it's a really terrific way. If you plan out your garden to have maybe a third to a half of cool weather veggies, but then as those finish, then you've got more room for the summer um, bearing fruit. And then again, just the one reminder that we do have a lot of great botanical interest um, pollinator uh, seeds, and you want to be able to sprinkle these around in your uh, garden beds. We also have sunflowers, that sunflower seeds, which you should plant on the east side of your garden bed so that they're not shading. But again, that's a pollinator and bird friendly um, plant. So we really want to make sure we're, we're giving back while we're bearing, uh, getting gifts from nature too. So we have to do our part. And again, um, that with additional native plants will be a wonderful addition to your gardens this year. So we'll be here for questions. And again, our crop will keep coming in. So we look forward to seeing you when you get the chance. But again, if you're not ready to come out yet, there are also some things you can plant without leaving your home. If you like um, uh, apples, when you cut them, don't cut the seeds exactly in half. Take those out, put them on a piece of paper towel, leave them for a day or two, and then plant them. And your kids will be so, kids of all ages, will be so surprised that pretty soon an apple tree will sprout. Now, granted, it's not going to bear apples for quite a few years, but it's fun to watch it grow. Same with avocado pits or same with carrot tops. There's lots of great things you can do inside with the kids to keep them interested in watching things grow. It's a great stress reliever for everyone. So enjoy your gardens, and we are here. Uh, you can call and place orders, and we do curbside pickup. So uh all all options so take thank you very much for joining us take care